Embracing the triple gem of the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, and rejecting the ways of demons and heretics, is the foundational principle for every disciple of Buddhism. However, some practitioners, upon entering the Buddhist path, may fail to grasp this essence accurately, leading to a disconnection from the secular world and its myriad beings. They may develop a sense of superiority, disdaining to engage with worldly knowledge and other religious domains. In their interactions, they may adopt a stern demeanor, eager to discern right from wrong, lacking a joyful heart and the wisdom of harmony. Such attitudes are indeed a great taboo in the practice of the path. The Buddha, during his lifetime, taught his disciples to study the five sciences, linguistics, phonetics and linguistics, technical knowledge, craftsmanship, technology, mathematics, astronomy, etc., medicine, philosophy, logic and philosophy, and spiritual knowledge, religion and Buddhist studies. These five sciences encompass a broad spectrum of knowledge, aimed at cultivating a comprehensive and profound wisdom. The ocean of learning is boundless, and compassion is eternal, which is the cornerstone of the Bodhisattva's path. Mahayana Buddhism advocates for courageous and diligent practice, encouraging a wide range of learning. It not only encourages Buddhists to explore extensively, but also views questioning and comparison as the beginning of practice. Doubt leads to understanding, small doubts lead to small insights, and great doubts can lead to profound enlightenment. Forbidding others from questioning and comparing is a sign of narrow-mindedness and lack of confidence, and the faith that arises from this is not genuine, nor is the path of the heart firm. In contrast, some heterodox teachings or cults often strictly prohibit their followers from engaging with other doctrines, which is a narrow approach. When the Venerable Shariputra had doubts about the Buddha's teachings, the Buddha did not reprimand him but instead praised him, saying, well done. This is seen as a manifestation of seeking truth and being pragmatic. On the path of practice, before complete enlightenment is achieved, one must not deceive oneself, doubt is the key that opens the door to truth. In summary, Buddhist disciples should be like sponges, absorbing knowledge widely, illuminating the darkness with wisdom, and nurturing all beings with compassion, thus living up to the teachings of the Buddha and the great vows of the Bodhisattvas. Shakyamuni Buddha summarized the methods for saving and guiding sentient beings into five vehicles, the vehicle of humans, the vehicle of devas, the vehicle of shravakas, the vehicle of pratyabuddhas, and the vehicle of bodhisattvas. For detailed content, please refer to the relevant Buddhist scriptures. Among them, the vehicle of humans and devas serves as the foundation of Buddhist practice and is also the moral norms advocated by all orthodox teachings, excluding cults and heterodox paths. It is also the common good deeds advocated by secular humanities and natural sciences. Therefore, true Buddhists should adopt an accepting attitude towards other good teachings, rather than rejecting them, which is the premise of entering the Buddhist path, let alone defaming secular knowledge, heterodox practices, or beliefs of other religions. After all, all dharmas are inclusive, whether it is secular wisdom, technological civilization, or heterodox qigong, all have their unique aspects and even achieve remarkable success. From a relative perspective, they are all the crystallization of the wisdom of sentient beings and the reflection and manifestation of the ultimate good dharma in the secular world. No matter what, they are all a vivid display of the interplay between the phenomenal and the empty, dependent origination and the nature of emptiness. The radiance of wisdom, such as Prajnaparamita, permeates all phenomena in the universe, guiding true practitioners to see through the limitations of all conditioned dharmas while humbly absorbing their strengths. Good dharma does not rely solely on the sacred symbol of Buddha. In fact, the profound teachings contained in Buddha are inherently one with all good dharmas. As stated in the Mahaprajnaparamita Sutra, Volume 6, the Buddha regards the dharma as the teacher, and the dharma is the mother of the Buddha. The exalted status of the dharma is on par with the Buddha. Shakyamuni followed the guidance of the dharma to transcend birth and death and achieve supreme enlightenment. Buddhist disciples also need to rely on the most ultimate and fundamental good dharma to reach the other shore of perfection. After more than 2,000 years of sedimentation, 
The teachings passed down after Shakyamuni became enlightened according to the Dharma reveal a possible path to ultimate perfection. Since then, in our time and space, the concepts of Buddha and Buddha Dharma have emerged. They are not just superficial symbols, but also contain the core essence of the ultimate good Dharma, Prajnaparamita. The Buddha mentioned a type of practitioner known as Pristha Buddha, whose realm is higher than that of Arhats and who has the potential to attain the fruit of a Pratyabhadada. Such individuals, although they may not have encountered the Buddha in their many lives and have not had the opportunity to hear the Dharma personally, remain steadfast and practice alone, focusing especially on the Dharma of the mind, constantly contemplating impermanence, and self-realizing the good Dharma of the Twelve Nidanas. Thus, they gain extraordinary wisdom and are named Prista Buddha, which implies a thorough understanding achieved independently. If a Pristha Buddha is fortunate enough to meet the Buddha, they are then called Pratyabhadada, and under the influence of the ultimate good Dharma, their practice progresses more rapidly, and their achievements are more significant. The Buddhist path is vast, and there is no fixed Dharma, all Dharmas are harmonious and lead to the same destination. Therefore, true Buddhist disciples will not disparage or belittle secular science and other religions. Instead, they will be open-minded, humbly seeking knowledge from all religions, Qigong masters, and secular scholars, learning from others' strengths to compensate for their own shortcomings. In this way, they can achieve boundless wisdom and fulfill the path of Bodhi.